As I drew farther and farther from the city, it began to hit me. I was out of my mind. Where I should have been was in my cozy little apartment overlooking the bay and writing that piece for Pacific Monthly. But no, I had to acquaint myself with all the wonders of the great outdoors. And why was I headed this way? Because of a phone call. A phone call from a man I hadn't seen in over 20 years. A man I wasn't sure I liked anymore. So why was I going? Well, maybe it was the sound of fear in his voice. A strange sound, because to my knowledge, Chase Prescott had never feared anyone or anything in his entire life. Had he changed so much? I had to find out, and not just for myself. My daddy used to say that curiosity would be the death of me. In this case, he was almost right. Inside the next 72 hours, Death and I would become only too well acquainted. Unlike a cat, however, I had only one life to sacrifice for my curious nature. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. I I'm going to Prescott Island. My name is Henrietta Collins. I know who you are. The others got here two, three hours ago. You're late. Oh, well, I I'm sorry. You see, I had car trouble and I tried to call, but no, you tell call on the island. No phones. No radios, no TVs. Do you live on the island? Born there. Worked there. Moved away. All my people lived there once. The lawyers came and told us to get out. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Well, I'm, I'm sorry. He calls it Prescott Island. My people have a different name. Translated to English, Dead Man's Island. That's what it always was. We'll be again someday. Well, Dead Man's Island. <laughs> that sounds kind of grisly. New storm coming. Yeah, so it hurt. He thinks because he built that big house that he's safe. But he doesn't understand. The gods have different plans. You'd be wise to stay on the mainland. Creepy guy, this old Indian. And he was right, too. I would have been wise to stay on the mainland.
Mrs. Collins. We've been worried about you. Here, let me take those for you. Burton Andrews, Mr. Prescott's private secretary. Hey, well, pleased to meet you, Burton. <laughs> Mr. Prescott suggested you go straight oh, to your room yes, and freshen up. Where's Mrs. Prescott? Well, in the living room serving tea, but... Tea? Wonderful. You know, I'm famished. I haven't eaten anything all day. Oh, I'll just pay my respects. Yes, but Mr. Prescott was, was very Al insistent. Burton, you never mind about Mr. Prescott. I can handle him. But, but Mrs. Collins... But, but Mrs. Collins... Mrs. Collins... Which way is the living room? Uh, that way. But, but, but really, Mr. Thank Collins... Thank you. Oh. Mrs. Collins, I presume. Welcome. I am Trevor Dunaway, attorney at law. Uh, but please, do not hold that against me. Oh, I wouldn't dream of it, Mr. Dunaway. I've even met murderers I've liked. Oh, by the way, the name's Henry O. To everybody. And you're Miranda, of course. Pleased to meet you. And I, you, Mrs. Collins. Huh? Henry O. Do you know Valerie St. Vincent, the well-known actress? Oh, no, we've never had the pleasure. Well, that's not surprising. I usually avoid the press whenever possible. Really? Well, that must put quite a crimp in your career. Henry O. Such an odd name. Shouldn't it actually be O. Henry? Oh, well, it was a dirty trick played on me years ago by our host. <laughs> He said my devious mind took more twists and turns than any O. Henry story. My real name is Henrietta O'Dwyer Collins. By the way, what's yours? Somebody's been watering the bourbon. Nonsense, Lyle, darling. Your taste buds have just gone numb. What is that, number eight? I think I've lost count. So have I. So have I. That god-awful tea of Chase's just gives me an upset stomach. Lyle Steadman, Mrs. Collins, nice to meet you. Uh, Henry O. Henry O., of course. Time has been very gracious to you, Henry O. I remember seeing you on Meet the Press, Face the Nation, something like that. You got quite a memory there, Lyle. Always for a pretty face. Ooh, I can see. I'm going to have to watch out for you. Yeah, don't get your hopes up, Henry O. Uh, Lyle's passion centers around uh, proposals, contracts, uh, financial statements. He's right. All those niggling little details that Chase detests. And while I'm curled up in bed with a P&L statement, he's curled up with his lovely wife. Henry O! His master's voice. Henry O! You didn't disappoint me. Hey, was there ever a doubt? Frankly, no. Did you meet everyone? Well, I don't know. Did I? Where's Roger and Haskell? Well, the last I saw your stepson, he was riding his bike out to the north end of the island. And as for your heir apparent... Oh, Roger said he was going to check on the radio on the Miranda Bay. For news of the storm, I believe. Ridiculous. The storm won't come anywhere near us. Well, go on with your tea. I want a word with Henry O. Chase, I'm starving. I'll let the housekeeper bring you something to eat. I wanted to talk to you before you met that crowd over there. Yeah, I figured that. Why? So we could get our stories straight. Stories? Chase, I don't even know why I'm here. Of course you do. Because I need you. Now go and pack. I'll send for you in a little while so we can talk private. It's upstairs. Turn left. Second door on the right. I want you to chat. Oh, hey, hey. Chili dough with lots of cheese on it. What? And uh, a cup of hot chocolate. You're going to ruin that gorgeous figure. Oh, honey. Chili dogs is what got me this way. Hi, Peter. It's me. What? What, Peter? I can barely hear you. No, 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 honey. Nothing's wrong. Nothing's wrong. I just wanted to let you know your old mom arrived. Frazzled, but all in one piece. No, no, he hasn't told me what he wants yet, but I have a feeling he's about to. Hey, how's Delilah? Has she had her bowl yet? Uh, uh, Delilah! Uh, honey, honey, this is silly. I'll call you when I get back to mainland. If you can still hear me, I love you. 
come in. Oh, good, just in time. Put 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 it right over there, please. Oh, thanks. Well, what's your name? Rosie, miss. Well, Rosie, you are a lifesaver. My, my, my. Over 20 years and he's still trying to run my life. Something wrong, miss? Huh? No, no. It's all in my head, Rosie. It's all in my head. Come in. forgotten how stunning you can be. <laughs> Must be that dry toast and skim milk. Just looking after your best interests. Mm -hmm. Chase looks after those who cannot look after themselves. Well, shall we get it over with? You're curious and so am I. Maybe if you'd fed me that chili dog. Nothing? Really? My ego's devastated. <laughs> hey, your ego's just fine. Well, now that we've had one for old Lang Syne, shall we get down to business? Please sit down. Care for a drink? Not right now. On the phone, you said you were in some sort of trouble. Yes. The papers said Prescott Consolidated is near in bankruptcy. Plunging headlong is more like it. Lyle and Roger are terrified. I told them not to worry. We have 45 days before our notes are due, and I'm expecting a huge infusion of cash. No, the company is not the problem. My difficulties are much more personal. Oh, no. Not Miranda. Dear Abby is a little out of my line. No, it's not that either. And no, I am not a dirty old man. Miranda did all the chasing. She's not hard to fall in love with. Well, no. I guess not. <laughs> well, if it's not business and it's not marital, then what? Quite simply, someone is trying to kill me. That's right. Not just someone. Chase, what the... Hear me out. It was ten days ago, Saturday. I was at my home in San Francisco. Went to my study to make some phone calls. And I took a chocolate turtle from a box on my desk. You know how I love it. Well, I gave you your first box. Right? That's right. Well, I dropped it accidentally on the floor. And before I could pick it up, Chesterfield, my golden retriever, bounced across the floor and ate it. Then he started to stagger. And in a few seconds, he was dead. bitter almonds. Cyanide. To be sure, I asked the vet to do a discreet autopsy. There's no question about it. The candy was laced with poison. It was meant for me. Don't tell me. You did not notify the police. The police? That's all I would have needed. More headlines. No amount of cash would have saved the company that got around that I was being stalked by some killer. Now, here's the thing. I opened the box on a Friday. Whoever poisoned the candy had to have done it sometime between Friday at 10 and Saturday noon. The only people in the house during those hours are the people I've invited to this island. One of them tried to kill me. Good thinking, Chase. And they may try it again. That's right. Which is why I have to learn who it is before they get another chance. Oh, no. And that's why you invited me here, to help you root out a murderer? Yes. And which one do I look like? Cagney or Lacey? Damn it, Henry O, you're the best investigator I know. You've got two Pulitzer Prizes to prove it. Oh, yeah, for journalism. I am not a cop. The techniques are the same. The police are out of the question, and you're the only one I can trust. Do you know, you, you are totally insane, Chase. Get completely out of your mind. No, 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 don't you see? It's my scenario now. I'm controlling things, not my killer. And best of all, 
he or she doesn't know I suspect. Hey, look, look. Even if I wanted to help, an investigation is based on facts, research. You know, I, I don't know the first thing about those people. I thought of that. I've got separate files on it. Completely detailed. Everything you need to know. There it was again, that fear in his voice. Chase Prescott was afraid. He was right, of course. Bringing in the police would mean disaster for Prescott Consolidated. Maybe that's what frightened him most, the collapse of his precious empire. That frightened him. Maybe even more than the loss of his own life. Dinner that night was a recipe for indigestion. You could have cut the tension with a chainsaw. Chase's son, Roger, seemed pleasant enough, but he laughed a little too loud at his father's bad jokes. He had a soft quality with none of Chase's hard edges. Took after his mother, no doubt. As for his stepson, Haskell, <laughs> there was nothing soft about that boy, or pleasant either. He didn't much like being there, and he didn't care who knew it. I want to thank you all for uh, accepting the invitation to join me here this week. I know it was short notice. And some of you had to rearrange your schedule. Valerie, that audition of yours would have been a waste of time. I have it on good authority that they had already offered the part to Sybil Shepherd. Oh, well, their loss. You've all met my dear friend, Henrietta Collins, or Henry O, as she is so quick to point out to one and all. I've asked Henry O to join us here this week for reasons that are not entirely social. As you all know, she's an award-winning journalist and in the past few years has made a name for herself as a first-rate biographer. First Eisenhower, then uh, Martin Luther King, and now Chase Prescott. <laughs> uh, have you forgotten, Chase, that uh, a new biography has just been published about your illustrious career, the man who could pick presidents? I am sorry, Trevor. You may wish to dignify that piece of yellow journalism. I don't. Half-truths, lies, scurrilous innuendo. Much of it's supplied, I'm afraid to say, by someone very close to me. Well, now, what's the plan, Chase? You're going to counteract it with some flattering puff piece? <laughs> Hardly, Lyle. I've asked Henry O. to write it as she sees it, warts and all. God knows I'm no saint. We all know that. <laughs> but I want the truth laid out. The truth, not some hatchet job by a second-rate hack. The truth. Oh, gee, Chase, are you sure you can handle the truth? Haskell, you hush now. I know the concept is foreign to you, Haskell, but try to do your best. Burton. Yes, Mr. Prescott. I want Mrs. Collins to have full access. Private papers, letters. Nothing is to be withheld. Yes, sir. As for the rest of you, please be as frank as possible. Even though the questions may seem a little odd to you, she speaks for me. I managed to escape a little after 10, pleading fatigue, which wasn't exactly true. As soon as I walked in the room, I noticed it. My purse had been moved. So too had the files. Apparently, somebody wasn't buying Chase's explanation of my presence there. Suddenly, those files seemed a lot more interesting. As I looked out over the ground, I felt a chill run up my back. 
and I knew the power had not failed by accident. Someone was out there. I could just feel it. Courage snapped along with that twig. Someone was out there, watching me, not the other way around. My daddy's words echoed in my head as I ran for safety. Henrietta, honey, when you come upon a rattler, don't waste time with introductions. about this island. How can you enjoy your breakfast without a morning newspaper? Is that your only problem, Lyle, darling? This loathsome place is like a floating prison. If you hate it so much, Valerie, what are you doing here? You know very well what I'm doing here, my good man. On her deathbed, my sainted sister got chased to promise to back me in a Broadway play. I'm here to make sure that he lives up to his word, whether he likes it or not. Money's tight, Valerie. Oh, I know. I've heard all that. Bankruptcy, auditors, the usual Chase Prescott propaganda. Amazing, isn't he? Same old thing every day. Fifty laps in the pool, get his heart started, ten minutes in the jacuzzi to get the kinks out, and the rest of the day he's got the energy of a twenty-year-old. Oh, scary thought, Roger. You know, I remember those days. So, you're here to try to turn my father into America's most beloved communications mogul? Well, I wish you luck. Hmm. I guess it can't be too much fun living in that great big old shadow, huh? I don't know. I pretty much know who I am. I don't need to compete. Really? Here comes Haskell. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> I mean, is he glued to that bicycle seat? That's all he's done since we've gotten here. He's in training. Good morning. Oh, morning. Morning. Grab some breakfast. I'll be with you in a minute. Stay away from the waffles. Rosie's much better than the eggs. Oh, honey, the last waffle I had went straight from my hips. <laughs> and it's still hiding out in there. <laughs> Whee! <laughs> Woo! Come on in. Except for your pores. And my pores are just fine, thanks. We have to talk. After breakfast. Breakfast will wait. going on? Oh, hello. Well, it would appear that uh, your husband and Henry Ho are involved in a deep conversation. Oh, uh, didn't they have a thing together once? I mean, a long, long time ago. I don't know. And frankly, Trevor, I don't care. Oh, by the by, I've often wondered, after you and Chase have tussled under the sheets, what in the world do you talk about? <laughs> and there's more, Chase. Did you know the power was turned off last night? When? By whom? Oh, around 2 a.m. I was still up reading. As to whom, like a damn fool, I raced outside to check on who it was. All of a sudden, the lights went on again. Then I heard some footsteps over near the generator shack. 
But when I called out, whoever it was stopped. You didn't see anyone? No, Chase. Being reasonably bright, I ran like hell. But that power outage was no accident. It may mean nothing. Oh, yeah, and bulls give milk. Maybe it means something, but I think we should be doubly cautious, you and I. Oh, I'm already into that. Maybe this wasn't such a good idea, dragging you into all this. Oh, well, thanks for your concern, but it's a little late. So, what are your plans? Follow my routine, as I always do. I'll go up to the point and do some painting. Painting? Kidding. Ah, why are you laughing? I'm really rather good. I have a whole setup overlooking the point. I'll quit about 12.30 for lunch, as usual. Then I'll take a short nap. Then a couple of hours with a good book. Or a short spin on the Miranda Bee, depending on the weather. Well, you can just skip the painting. I don't like the idea of you being out there alone. Henry, oh, use your head. Whoever's stalking me is a ferrety little coward who strikes only at night. If he strikes at all. Oh, maybe yes, maybe no. But I think I'll just come along. And watch me work against the rules chase away my muse. Besides, don't you have some questions to ask? My guests, as you can well imagine, are waiting with bated breath to reveal all. Come on, let's go get some breakfast and lose that look. They'll think we're two old lovers having a spat. I'd told him about the files being out of place, and he seemed genuinely alarmed. For the first time, he realized that he might not be the only one in danger. By the way, that breakfast was quite a spread, Rosie. Thank you, Miss. How long have you and Milo been working for Mr. Prescott? Four years now. And you came here with him from San Francisco? Oh, yes, Miss. We go wherever Mr. Prescott goes. Here, San Francisco, the apartment in New York, even on the boat trips. We make sure everything's right for him all the time. Hmm. Well, I guess you must like working for him, then. Oh, yes, miss. He's a good boss. Very kind. Very nice. You and your husband, have you always done this kind of work? Rosie, leave that. There are beds to be made. I'll finish here. Go. There's much work to be done in just the two of us, you understand. I understood all right. Rosie was scared to death of this man, and he sure didn't want her answering my questions. I wondered why. Have you seen Mr. Andrews? I've been looking for him everywhere. No, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, I meant to ask you. What was the problem with the power last night? The power? What are you talking about? Well, it was off for about 15 minutes. I just figured you were the one who restored it. Last night I was asleep. All night. Oh. Well then, I guess it must have been someone else. <laughs> Thank you. Collins, you startled me. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just checking the safe for some papers Mr. Prescott needed. Apparently, they're still back in San Francisco. I believe Mr. Prescott is out on the point. He usually is this time of day. Actually, I came here to speak with you. If you've come to query me about Mr. Prescott, I'm afraid I can't be much help. There is the matter of confidentiality. Oh, now, Bert, you heard Mr. Prescott last evening. Nevertheless, I'm sorry. I worried all last night about what I should say to you, what not to say. It's ingrained in me, Mrs. Collins. Revealing confidences about my employer goes against everything I believe, permission or not. Well, then I don't suppose you were the source of gossip for the man who picks presidents. Good Lord, no. Earlier, I looked on the shelf for a copy. Oh, I already read it. I just wanted to refresh my memory. There is no copy here on the island. 
Mr. Prescott wouldn't permit it. A vile piece of trash, Mrs. Collins, totally untrue. All of it? I believe the author got his birth date right. Now, if there's nothing else, I have work to do. Hmm. Later, Bert. Yes, perhaps. What's the gear ratio on the top end? You know about racing? No, no. Now, years ago, I covered the Tour de France for the Trib. The Tour, huh? Mm -hmm. What I wouldn't give. Just now, that's a little out of my league. Oh, then you do compete. Yeah. There's a thousand miler next month in Ohio. I was getting in shape for it when, uh, when Chase invited me here for the week. Well, I guess you could have said no. Lady, I could do a lot of things if I had the bucks, which I don't. So, uh, if you're gonna ask me a lot of things about Chase, don't. I'll just lie and tell you what a great guy he is. That's very cynical for such a young man. Oh, don't get me wrong. Oh, Chase is a great teacher. Axiom one, take what you want when you want it. Well, that axiom's taking your stepfather a long way, Haskell. I'm not talking about business. You have met, uh, Miss Magnolia. The Belle of Biloxi. Weird, huh? My stepmother's only two years older than I am. Don't you think you're being a little unfair? I mean, after your mother died, Chase must have been very lonely. I, I can't fault him for falling in love with Miranda. Yeah, neither would I, if he hadn't done it a year before Mom died. That's what killed her, you know. It wasn't the car crash. She died long before that. See what I mean? I'm a lousy interview. Haskell may have considered himself a lousy interview, but one fact was becoming increasingly clear. He was not alone in his feelings. Everyone here had reason enough to kill Chase Prescott. Watching you from my window. That's a nice serve you got there. Thank you. I don't suppose you'd care for a game. Miranda stood me up oh. again. Oh, no, no, no. Tennis and I have never been formally introduced. Mm. Though I imagine Chase must give you a pretty good game, huh? When I let him. Uh, that's how we met, you know. Four Oak Country Club. Play tennis uh, three times a week, early in the morning. Before I knew it, I was working for him. Huh. Funny how that worked out, huh? Mm. <laughs> so you must be pretty busy these days. Fending off predators? I certainly am. No, if I was Chase, I would be shaking in my shoes. The situation's really hopeless, yes. but he is nothing if not optimistic. You know what he said to me last week? Nothing will topple Prescott Consolidated. Nothing. He guaranteed it. Yeah, personally, I think he's got brain damage. Tell me something. What happens to Chase's estate when he dies? What does that have to do with the book that you're writing? Everything. I mean, if somebody bad mouths Chase, I want to know if his picture's been turned to the wall. A, a disinherited. It's an old Irish expression. 
Oh, I'm sorry, Henry. Oh, I cannot help you. I don't even know if there's a will. Perhaps he's planning to take it with him. You know, it's amazing. I mean, except for the housekeeper, nobody around here seems to have a kind word to say about our host. Oh, well, then obviously you have not been talking to Lyle. Oh, are they close? Close? Well, no, I, I wouldn't take it that far. See, Lyle has raised the level of toadying to uh, new heights. He also thinks you've been brought here as a spy. A spy? Mm -hmm. To report back to Chase exactly what each and every one of us really thinks about the old bastard. But I give you more credit than that. Why, thank you. Shots. So did we, from the point. Mr. Prescott! Where is he? Chase! Where the hell are you? Chase! I'm all right. Dad, what happened? I thought I heard shots. Yeah, I'm right you did. Someone tried to kill me. Oh, come on. One of us? Is there anyone else on the island? I looked for a boat. There's no one out there, Mr. Prescott. Trevor, I want everyone in the living room in 30 oh, minutes. Change. 30 minutes. Everyone. I scanned their faces, looking for a telltale sign of guilt. Of those who had rushed to the scene, Burton Andrews seemed the most agitated. There was something he was hiding, yet I couldn't picture him holding a gun, much less firing one. Someone had fired, though, and judging from the bullet holes in Chase's painting, I began to try and get an idea where the shots might have come from. Of those who had not reacted to the shots, Valerie had been playing the piano and hadn't heard it, so she claimed. Haskell said he was on the far side of the island riding his bicycle. Miranda had been resting in her bedroom after a lousy night's sleep. Rosie'd been in the kitchen fixing lunch. Except for Trevor and I, everyone else had been alone when the shots rang out. Any of them could have fired the pistol, which incidentally, I had not yet found. When Chase told them of the poison candy and the death of his dog, the reaction was one of stunned disbelief. I think you must be mistaken. No mistake, Lyle. There have been two attempts on my life by someone in this room. How dare you suggest that I would do such a thing? I said someone, Valerie. Everyone is equally under suspicion, except Henry O, of course, who had no access to the chocolates. Which brings me to the real reason why I asked her here this week. Quite frankly, she's the best investigator I know, and she's agreed to help me discover the identity of my would-be killer. You know, that was before this morning, Chase. I think the police should be brought in immediately. Not only that, I think we should get the hell off this bloody island as soon as possible. No. Nobody leaves. Whoa, wait a minute now. I mean it, Lyle. Everybody stays, unless you're willing to swim for it. Dad, you, you can't do this. I'm not asking for your opinion, Roger. Consider it an executive decision, if you like. Well, Chase, darling, I don't happen to work for you. And I demand to be taken to the mainland now. No. You bastard. 
I think I should warn you, Chase, you are inviting a very expensive lawsuit. I'm willing to take that chance. You seem to have forgotten something, Chase. I don't work for you either. Perhaps we should talk. Oh, Chase, are you out of your mind? Calm down. You almost had your head shot off out there. And I'm sorry. I am not going to stand by and watch you get murdered. Now, we leave the island now, all of us, and we notify the police. No. And no. Well, then, I'm going to call the mainland and have the police come here. Call? Well, I brought a cellular telephone with me. Henry O, you can't do this. Bringing in the police now will be the end of everything. Well, if I don't, it'll be the end of you. Have you got some kind of death wish? Of course not, for God's sakes. Then why? Because whoever it is has started to panic. Shooting at me was stupid. Stupid people make mistakes. This has got to be handled here and now. No. You owe me. Oh, Chase, I don't owe you a thing. No? Believe it or not, I've kept track of you all these years. Your marriage to Richard, only months after we broke up. I've seen pictures of you and Peter. He's got my eyes. My coloring. Are you going to deny he's my son? You've known. All these years. And by the way, did Richard know? Of course he knew. He must have loved you very much. And Peter, does he know? Why, are you planning on telling him? No, take it easy. Huh? No, no, you listen. And you listen real good. I didn't come here just because you summoned me. I came because I had to find out what kind of man you'd become. Seems to me you haven't changed much. I wasn't threatening you. Oh, the hell you weren't. You know, there's a, there's a small part of me that says my son has a right to know who his real father is. And then there's another piece. It's a bigger one, too. It says leave things alone. But if you want to push, I can push back real hard. It's your choice. You won't hear it from me. I want your word on that. You got it. Now will you stay? Oh. Please, Henry. It's not easy for me to beg. But I'll beg if I have to. All right, I'll stay on two conditions. One, that somebody is with you at all times, preferably me or Trevor. Trevor was with me when the shots were fired. What else? And the second one, we give it 24 hours. If we haven't figured this thing out by the end of that time, we leave the island, all of us. Fair enough. I knew I could count on you. Oh, I'll tell you what you can count on. If you ever threaten me about Peter again, I may just have to kill you myself. And you can count on that, darling. I don't think this boat trip is such a great idea. Of course it is. I don't spend the rest of the day looking over my shoulder, and Henry O gets to poke around without worrying about my safety. Chase is right. He'll be safe out on the water with you. But hey, while you're out there, will you check the weather report? You know, I have a feeling that storm's going to visit us here. Mm. But you are probably right. Oh, by the way, uh, remind me to talk to you about insurance policy when I get back, okay? I insurance? Yeah, Lloyd's of London. It might have some bearing. Then again, it might... Trevor, be... come on! Oh, right, right. Bye-bye. Henriot. Hi there. Well, it'll be safe enough out there. Yeah, for a couple hours, anyway. Look, you're the only one who can talk sense into it. This situation is insane. We've got to leave this island. Good idea. You tell him when he gets back. Oh, sure. Why not? He holds such a high regard for my opinion. Oh. <laughs> Don't be too hard on yourself, Roger. I mean, most fathers I know get along with their boys like a dog fighting over a bone. Yeah, well, we don't fight anymore. I gave that up a long time ago. 
That's too bad. Chase doesn't have much use for people he can roll right over. Well, then I guess he doesn't have a lot of use for anybody. Including your stepmother? What about her? Look, Raj, I am playing catch up here and I'm running out of time. I need to know what kind of marriage they have. Pretty damn good, considering the difference in their ages. Your father says she chased him. I guess. So what? So what do you think? I mean, is it true love or something else? I wouldn't know. Oh, come on, Raj. Poor girl from the wrong side of the tracks, dashing millionaire. <laughs> Sounds like a Jackie Collins novel. Look, if you're suggesting that Miranda would kill my father for money, no. You're wrong. She couldn't do it. All right, maybe not her personally. But before she married your father, didn't she work for Lyle Stedman? Sure, but... No, that's crazy. There's nothing between Lyle and Miranda. Besides all that macho crap of his, he's scared to death of Dad. Honey, nobody is afraid of a dead man. All right, skip over Lyle for a minute. Have you ever seen a gun on this island? A 45 automatic? No. What? What? Come on, speak, Roger. Dad keeps a 38 revolver out on the boat, uh, just in case. There's a lot of loonies floating around out there. <laughs> you don't have to tell me. I'm from Texas. An automatic. Is that the kind of gun used in the attempt? Uh-huh. Where's Miranda? She's lying down in her room, I think. Uh, do you have to? She's... she's pretty shaken up. The clock's ticking. Oh, I do hope I'm not disturbing you. The Scarlet. Do forgive me, I was just lying down. It's been just a dreadful day. With all things considered, it could have been a lot worse. Yes. What time is it? Oh, my word. It'll be tea time before you know it. I really should talk to Rosie. Tea can wait, Miranda. You and I need to talk. Yes, of course. But I can't think of anything I could possibly say that would be of interest. Miranda. You're reading this all wrong. I mean, whatever Chase and I felt for each other died 28 years ago. Oh, no, really, Henry O. I thought nothing of the sort. Oh, then you're not the one that went through my purse. Well, that's a terrible accusation. I was never in your room. Never. Excuse me. I mean, did I say it was searched in my room? I was so frightened when Chase said he'd invited you. After all these many years, I didn't know what to think. Oh, honey. God's truth, you have nothing to fear from me. I was being silly, wasn't I? I just have such a hard time keeping up, you know. When Chase and I are alone, it's wonderful. But when the others are around, they're so smart. They know all the right things to say. Oh, Lord, child. You know, when I was your age, I had sawdust for brains. And I'll tell you something else. Chase wasn't that far ahead of me. I find that hard to picture. <laughs> well, don't tell him I told you so. It'll just make him more upset than he already is. Miranda, there is one thing you could help me out on. Something that'll help us get to the bottom of what's going on. Anything. Chase's will, what's in it? It's not really important. Well, murder and money seem to walk hand in hand. Yes, of course. It's all really very straightforward. Under an agreement signed prior to the marriage, I received ten million. Aside from a few special bequests, Roger inherits the rest. What about these special bequests? Fifty thousand each for Milo and Rosie, and another fifty thousand for a sister in Oracle. Well, it looks like Haskell got shut out. No, on his twenty-fifth birthday, he comes into a trust fund left to him by his late mother. He is well provided for. Well, thank you, Miranda. You've been real helpful. And like I said, don't you worry. We're gonna get through this. You're very kind. 
Oh, Henry O. There's one more request I forgot to mention. Oh? The sum of $500,000 to a young man named Peter Collins? Your son, I believe. Darling, I do everything with a lot of passion. Well, you're here to question me? What took you so long? Or am I just so low on your list of priorities? Well, I guess you'd rather be at the top of the list, then. I would rather be anywhere but this godforsaken island. But, in answer to your questions, the answers are in order, no and yes. That is, of course, assuming that your questions are, did you take a pot shot at Chase? And secondly, don't you wish you had? <laughs> well, oh, that's very refreshing. You, you make a great suspect. Darling, don't you realize everyone on this island would love nothing better than to attend Chase Prescott's funeral? Yes. Well, I imagine you were a tiny bit put out when he didn't choose you to be the third Mrs. Prescott. What little bird have you been talking to? Well, I really admire your guts, Val. I mean, all the, the abuse Chase heaps on you. I, you know, I wouldn't put up with that for a second. Yes, well, I can tolerate anything Chase Prescott can dish out, provided he keeps his promise. Oh, what kind of promise was that? A year ago, Chase promised to back me in a Broadway play. Oh, I have witnesses. My attorney says I could win in court, but obviously I would prefer to avoid the messy publicity of a trial, so I just keep desperately hoping that Chase's good nature will compel him to live up to his word. Unfortunately, so far, there have been absolutely no sightings of the aforementioned good nature. Hmm. Well, it seems like you'd much rather have Chase alive, then. Would seem so, wouldn't it? Valerie was right. Chase was feared, and fear breeds hatred. I'd never thought of Chase as a hateful man. Strong, yes, and stubborn as a jackass when he wanted his own way, uh, which was all the time. He was the first man I ever really loved, or so I thought at the time. Looking back, I guess it was just my infatuation with a sophisticated, powerful man. The arrogance, which had always remained just below the surface, was out in the open now, poisoning everyone around him. Still... I owed him something, and I was determined to keep my word. Don't worry, it's just a gopher snake. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. Well, you did. You know, they say that animals can tell when there's going to be an earthquake. They also say that snakes can tell when it's going to storm. And this little guy... He's just trying to find some place where he thinks he'll be safe. He may have a surprise coming if history's any guide. Huh? Oh, you mean the legends? Dead Man's Island destroyed by Indian gods. Not a single survivor. Not exactly something to smile about. Oh, come on. Take all that with a grain of salt. Well, I hope you're right. By the way, if it's here, I couldn't find it. Find what? Gun. That's what you're looking for, isn't it? Yeah. Got to be here somewhere. Not if it was carried off by one of those who never showed up. One of the women? <laughs> I can't imagine one of them shooting a 45. Me neither. But then there's Haskell. He says he was on the other side of the island. He says he never heard the shots. What's his motive? I mean, he has nothing to gain if Chase dies. See anything, he'll be stone broke for two years until he comes into his trust fund. Kid's a flake. 
No, he's worse than that. He's nuts. He blames Chase for his mother's death. It got so bad, they had to put him away for a while. Well, that wasn't in the file. The file? Yeah, of course. Chase probably worked up material on all of us. Am I right? Yeah. You know, we better start looking for that gun. What does it say about me? Never mind, I can probably guess. You know, I used to be a pretty good news hound before Chase turned me into a glorified paper pusher. Vice president in charge of operations. It's a great title, isn't it? You want the translation? Hatchet man. Doer of the dirty deeds. Card carrying yes man. There's no law that says you can't quit. Sure. I'm 46 years old. I'm twice divorced. I'm borderline alcoholic. Who the hell else is going to hire me? Much less pay me 500,000 a year. Yeah, Chase pays his flunkies real well. Besides, I put a high price on my self-respect. He's back. Not now, Henry. Oh. What was that all about? The usual. I've been fired again. No, uh, don't worry, he doesn't mean it. See, in order to terminate me, he has to hand over a wheelbarrow full of common stock and my pension plan, which, of course, is not worth a hell of a lot these days. What would you argue about? Well, the way he's keeping his guests prisoner on this island. I mean, the storm is getting worse, it's gathering strength, it's heading toward land. And I told him that he should tell you about that insurance policy. He disagreed. The one with Lloyd's? Hmm. It was Lyle's idea. Uh, four years ago, the company took out this insurance policy for $50 million on Chase. I mean, Prescott Consolidated is Chase Prescott. Oh, no argument here. Except there's a recall. See, at that time, uh, our radio stations and newspapers were fighting the Muslim terrorists. So they retaliated by putting a million-dollar price tag on Chase's head. So Lyle slipped in a double indemnity clause just in case Chase got killed. Oh, my God. So he's another Salman Rushdie. Well, except for two things. Number one, Chase did not go into hiding. And number two, well, I haven't noticed any Muslims skulking around this island lately, have you? Or slipping poison into his box of chocolates. Hmm. Of course. Could have hired somebody. Well, who? Got Milo? Well, he, he's been with Chase for four years, and he is fiercely loyal. Honey, we're talking a hundred million dollars. Well, there's another possibility. Consider. With 100 million fresh dollars from Lloyd's, the chase consolidated would suddenly be breathing easier. And Lyle Stedman is in charge. Did you bounce that off, Chase? Oh, I did. Oh, I did. He told me to go to hell. <laughs> well, I'd better go and try and get my job back. Oh, by the way, I hear there's a pistol on board the boat. Not anymore. It is now tucked in Chase's belt. By nightfall, the mood of the guests was beginning to resemble the dark sky of the coming storm. Polite conversation was in short supply and there was no shortage of sniping, sarcasm, and backbiting. Finally, Chase made his entrance, and not surprisingly, was greeted with sullen smiles. But when he smiled and reached down to squeeze my shoulder, I knew that something had changed. Been quite a day, hasn't it? I know you've all been watching the weather, so I. Uh, quite frankly, I don't think there's a chance in a thousand that the storm will hit the island, but I'm also aware that's a minority opinion. 
This morning I said uh, we'll stay here until we find out who was doing the shooting. This afternoon my esteemed counsel advised me that it was an unwise decision. Besides, there's a certain folly in making oneself a sitting duck. So, I've decided. Tomorrow morning, after breakfast, we return to the mainland. After dinner, Valerie, contrary to all requests, played the piano. Whatever was going on under the surface, Chase seemed determined to restore a festive mood to the night. He organized a backgammon tournament, which being Chase, he was damn well gonna win. Off in the study, however, Trevor and Burton Andrews had their own private session. Though I couldn't hear what was being said, Burton was obviously upset about something. Later, when I cornered Trevor, he said it involved some corporate papers Burton couldn't locate. Not to worry, it was only Burton being Burton. I didn't believe that for a moment. I was determined to make some sense of what just happened. One last ditch effort to get to the bottom of things. It was close to midnight when I heard voices on the terrace below my window. No, 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 you are just exercising good judgment, as you always have. Chase? Henry O. Is this boys only, or can anyone join in? <laughs> well, he can't sleep, so neither can I. <laughs> Why don't you go up to bed? I'll be safe enough, Henry oh, I... oh, don't fret, Trevor. I'll walk him straight to the door, I promise. Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> God, how I love this island. Lord, keep it safe. Why, Chase? I didn't know you'd become religious. In the past couple of weeks, I've become a lot of things. You know, twice tonight I tried to get you alone, and you just kept sidled away from me. I know. Trevor told you about the Lloyd's policy. He shouldn't have. It has no bearing. Unless it's Lyle Stedman who's trying to kill you. No, not Lyle. Of them all, Lyle's the one I trust the most. I look at him, I see myself 20 years ago. Fearless, determined. How determined? Seems to me, if you're murdered, your company's saved, and Lyle takes over your empire. It was almost like a son to me. I have a question that's been haunting me for 28 years. Why? Why what? Why did you leave me? Oh, you know why. A professor pal of yours? I never did believe that. No, I don't suppose you did. But he was the reason. All those stories you wrote vilifying him when you knew he was innocent. He was arrested. Oh, on a trumped-up charge. I don't think so. There were two young boys waiting oh, to for testify God's against sake. him. Somebody had to bring that story out. Oh, well, that's all it was. A story. Nothing more. Just a story. We'll never know for sure, will we? Look, I know the man was close to you, but it was not my fault that he killed himself. He was weak. Oh, and you were strong. Oh, were you strong. And totally unprincipled. You must have hated me. No. No, not hate. Just disgust. At myself for not seeing you for what you were. But I'll tell you one thing. 
It was your strength that built your empire. And I don't know anyone else who could have done it. Should I take that as a compliment? I wouldn't. Miranda B. Dad! Sir? It's gone. Let it burn. Chase! All right. Darling, I was so One of you is a damn fool. By the next morning, our situation was starting to slide towards desperate. Coast Guard, can you... Hello? It is an emergency. This is Prescott. The storm hadn't hit full force yet, but it sure as hell was on its way. An hour, a few minutes, we had no way of knowing. The old house seemed too big to really be unsteady, but I kept remembering what that old Indian said. Strangely, though, with the storm bearing down, Haskell had suddenly disappeared. Roger went to look for him while I tried to get some straight answers from Burton Andrews. Dynamite? I know of no dynamite on the island, Mrs. Collins. Are you sure? It's my job to be sure. Now, there was some, Henry O. Months ago, Hudson, the old Indian, and a couple of men from the mainland used it to blow up tree stumps to make room for the tennis court. Do you know where it was stored? I think they brought it with them. I do wish Chase would come inside. It's so awful out there. And he just swims as if nothing were going on. I'm not sure if I got through or not, Henry O. You're not sure? So only for a few seconds, and it was a muffled connection. But they might be aware of our situation. Well, we better tell Chase. I agree.
go help with Chase. Whoever put the hair dryer in the tub did a good job of hiding it deep into the water behind the ladder. Even when the water was still, it was hard to spot. Now it was clear why the power had been turned off that first night. Someone had been testing this murderous device. The person hiding in the dark that night was undoubtedly the same one who had rigged the hair dryer. But who and where had the hair dryer come from? It's mine. What's yours? You know damn well what. The hair dryer. I recognized it immediately. Now ask me if I'm stupid enough to use my own hair dryer to murder Chase Preston. When did you notice it was missing? I didn't. Well, not until I checked my bags a few minutes ago. I never unpacked it because all the bathrooms here are with the buildings. In other words, someone could have taken it at any time. That's right. Any time, anyone. Please tell that to the police if we ever get off this damn island alive. Valerie. I am sorry. About what? About Chase. I know you must have loved him very much. Must be saved. Out of the boy yesterday morning, after the shot. Were you the first one on the scene? Incredible. Are you still playing detective, Mrs. Collins? Mr. Prescott is dead. Answer my question. No, I wasn't the first. Milo was already there. When we got back to the house, I asked you what you saw. And I told you, I didn't see anything. Oh, no, that's not what you said, Bird. You said you hadn't seen anyone take a shot at Mr. Prescott. That's the same thing. Is it? Where do I get this feeling you're hiding something? I am hiding nothing, Mrs. Collins. Now, please, go! You saw something, didn't you? Someone? Did you hear me? I am not going to answer any of your questions. Now, leave me to my work. What were you and Trevor Dunaway fighting about? What? Last night, here in the study. He did. He shouldn't have done that. What the hell's the matter with you? You were supposed to stay with her. La, what's going on? She's left Miranda alone. Randy? Randy? Huh? Barbiturates. Looks like she took the whole bottle. Excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah, she's still alive. Quick, help me get her in the bathroom. God. You okay? Yes. Keep her walking. I'll go down and get some coffee. Okay. What is it? What happened? She's taking pills. Go give Lyle a hand. Rosie, it's a curse. We've all been cursed. Oh, Rosie, stop it. It's a storm, nothing more. No, oh, the Indians. Mr. Prescott should never have built this house here. It's their sacred grounds. He died. Now the rest of us will die. I told you. 
Don't listen to that evil Indian legend malarkey. My lord, what was this? Oh, it's just nothing. Crazy old Indians talking of angry gods and storms killing anyone on the island. When? Well, the last time we were here, six or seven months ago. You mean when that old Indian, uh, what's his name, uh, Hudson was here blowing away the tree stumps with dynamite? You mean he's the one who blew the boat? But he's not even here on the island. Well, we don't know that for sure. I mean, which of us would be crazy enough to do it? The Miranda B was our only way of getting back to the mainland. Milo, put on coffee, lots of it, and take it upstairs. Mrs. Prescott's taking pills. Yes, ma'am. How is she? Well, she's awake, barely. She's talking to herself. Oh, I'll take her. You go down and hurry up that coffee. Okay. What is it, Miranda? What are you saying? She didn't love me enough. Love me Who didn't love you enough? Chase? Chase. She comes to me. That's all that ever mattered. She just didn't love me enough. What's she talking about? I don't know. Miranda, what are you... Oh, damn, well, that's the power. Oh, oh! Ah! All right. Ah! God! It's all right. Oh! Oh, we gotta get downstairs! Oh! The door is stuck! Let me get it. Move! to me. The who. The why. I wasn't even holding a pair of deuces, but I decided to try a bluff. Oh, my Lord, he's still alive. Stay with me. Burton. Burton. Who did this? Father, too, you son of a bitch! You stay back. Oh, my God. Now, where the hell do you think you're going? You stay back. I swear I will kill the first person who comes near me. Stay back. in the woods near the gazebo. I kept it for protection. No, he's not, Lyle. Give me the gun. Give me the gun, Milo. I know you didn't kill Mr. Prescott. You, you know who did?
искать надо. You know that, don't you, Miranda? What? You said he didn't love you enough. That his empire was all that mattered. And then, I remembered something that Trevor told me. Do you know what he said to me last week? Nothing is going to topple Prescott and consolidate it. Nothing. He guaranteed it. I'm sorry, I am not following this. A poison chocolate. Witnesses? None. Shots fired at a solitary chase. Witnesses? None. And hanging over all of this, an insurance policy in the amount of $100 million. Payable only if Chase Prescott is murdered. $100 million. Enough to save the precious empire he spent a lifetime building? Oh, my God. Are you saying he killed himself? Did he, Miranda? I don't know. He talked of it once, months ago, but he was drunk. I just thought he was joking. That bastard. He just used me. He used all of us, Valerie. Most of all, me. We need to get out of here! If the ground below gets raised, this house and everything else goes with it! We've got to get to higher ground! I believe that the old Indian legend may have been an understatement. We slogged through the mud and the rain and the wind until we reached the highest point of land on the island. There, we huddled together under a clump of trees, watching the storm ravage the island and the old house, and praying together that somehow the Coast Guard would find a way to rescue us. That long night gave me plenty of time to play it all out in my mind. Burton Andrews had obviously seen Chase stage the phony shooting. Upset, he felt he had to tell someone. He chose Trevor. Trevor figured out what Chase was up to and realized the company would be saved, along with his job and his stock, which would be worthless if the company went under. But Trevor also knew that Burton was timid and unreliable. If he told what he knew, the scheme would fall apart. And Trevor couldn't allow that to happen. It's been troubling me all night. Suicide to look like murder to collect a hundred million dollars. My father, to save his company, why? Well, he didn't do it for himself. He did it for all of you. It's the only family he ever had. all been puppets for Chase Prescott, dancing about whenever he pulled the strings. Now the play was over. Of course, as far as the police and the insurance company were concerned, everything would be just conjecture. No proof. Which meant that Chase's scheme probably worked after all. And Roger would inherit the future of Prescott Consolidated. I was happy for Roger, I guess. But as for the truth, I didn't care much. For me, a chapter had closed on my life. And for that, I was very, very grateful. <laughs>